Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, board certified family practice, and today we're going to talk about the correct way to check your blood pressure using a blood pressure cuff at home. So it's important to know what your blood pressure is, not just when you go to the doctor's office, because you don't go to the doctor very often, and I consider blood pressure like a snapshot. If you're going to give me one snapshot and ask me to guess what a movie is about, I could be very inaccurate. If you give me 20 or 30 different snapshots of a movie, I can look through them and get a pretty good guess what the movie is about. So not only blood pressure in the office, but do home blood pressures as well. Uh, there's a couple important things that you need to do when you do your blood pressure so you get correct readings. It's not actually that simple. First thing is we're going to do the blood pressure in the arms. You can do left or right arm. Technically, uh, we prefer the left arm because it's about three inches closer to the heart than the right arm. Uh, but if you are one-handed and it's easier to wrap the cuff one way or the other, that's fine. If you've had a uh, mastectomy and you can't use your left arm, the right arm is fine. I don't have any problem with the right arm. Uh, next, we want to make sure what you're measuring is about heart high. So we're trying to approximate the pressure of the blood as it comes out of the heart. So if your arm is up like like that, the blood literally runs out of your arm and your pressure is going to be lower, so you're not going to do your blood pressure like that. Um, if you're in a position where your arm is hanging down, blood is running into your arm and the pressure will be higher. So generally sitting at the kitchen table uh, with your arm relaxed and about heart high is great. Uh, you want to make sure that your blood pressure cuff is the correct size for your arm. So I've got a medium arm. I'm going to use a medium cuff. There's a little mark on the cuff, and you want to make sure that that mark is in the normal range when you do it. If you can't get your cuff on your arm and have that mark in the normal range, you need to use a different size blood pressure cuff. The cuffs are going to have a little mark on it. Mine says artery and it has a little circle. You want to make sure that lines up with your blood vessel in the front of your arm. So typically where you would get your blood drawn is where your blood vessel is and you want the cuff mark to line up there so the measuring device is listening over the blood vessel. If you've got a bigger upper arm, so women tend to have this if they're heavier, their upper arm is really big and their mid arm is low and their arm is very tapered so you have to do the blood pressure cuff kind of on the diagonal so you have the same uh, tightness top and bottom. So we're going to snug the cuff on a little bit of a diagonal. We're going to make sure that that little indicator is where your blood vessel is. We're going to make sure we got about two fingers of tightness top and bottom so it's the same and then we're going to make sure that the cuff is about heart high or equal to your heart and that your arm is relaxed. You don't want your muscles tight because that's going to change the blood pressure. Uh, my cuff has a little manual inflator bulb so I want to make sure that I'm inflating it with my other arm so I'm not pumping up the muscles on my arm so I'm not doing it like this. Um, sometimes it's just a button. Okay. You want to make sure you're nice and relaxed when you do it. Um, don't do five in a row and then take the best of the five because your blood pressure changes uh, uh, when you have the thing squeezed several times. So arm, left or right, doesn't matter. Go through those different things. First off, most important, make sure you've got a correct size cuff. Make sure that the little circle thing or the little red ribbon lines up with your blood vessel. Make sure if you have a tapered arm that the top and bottom are similar tightnesses. Make sure that your arm is about heart high when you do your blood pressure. A way that we can avoid 90% of this effort is to buy a wrist blood pressure cuff. And they've seemed to have gotten more accurate in the last few years. So they're smaller. It's a little preformed plastic plastic tube like that and you open the thing up and the thing literally just pops on your wrist. Everybody's wrist is about the same size so it tends to be uh, pretty straightforward that everybody uses the same size. The one thing that you need to do, watch the pictures in the book, but you usually put your arm like that so you want the same thing, uh, wrist to be about heart high. You want to use your other arm to support your wrist so you're not using your muscles to hold it up and you want to be able to relax it when you're done. We want to check your blood pressure at different times of the day. So we want to do good day, bad day, weekday, weekend, um, get different numbers. I don't want just Sunday morning reading the paper blood pressures and show me that they're normal. Um, it's quite typical if your blood pressure goes up in the doctor's office that that's not the only stressful time in your life, it's being stuck in traffic, going to work, paying bills, dealing with your kids. All of those are stressful events. It's not just going to the doctor's office. So what's called white coat hypertension may not be a true phenomenon because those people that have elevated blood pressure the doctor's office likely have blood pressure elevations elsewhere and that's where we're going to get multiple readings. I do have a few patients who literally are 30 points higher at the doctor's office than they are anywhere else and I don't treat their blood pressure because I have enough information on them to tell them that their blood pressures are good except while they're here. 
when you go to the doctor's office, if you have a cuff, not only remember to bring your numbers, it doesn't help me if you're checking your blood pressures but have no idea what your numbers are at home, but bring your cuff with you as well and we'll actually measure your cuff against my cuff. And if you can get me a reproducible number that's within about five points of my cuff, then I'll believe your numbers and we can go ahead and trust your numbers. Lastly, uh, what do those numbers mean? Uh, the numbers are measured in what's called millimeters of mercury. So a certain pressure is able to push a column of mercury so many millimeters. So a 120 over 80 blood pressure means at that top number, a, you can push a tube or a column of mercury, 120 millimeters or about 20 centimeters. That's what the measurement is when we have the old-fashioned mercury blood pressure machines. It's actually pushing a column of mercury up and we measure that. The more common ones are either spring-loaded and they use a spring to uh, make an equivalent of that or your home machine which is a digital machine. Uh, be careful in the office if the uh, assistant is using a digital machine it probably is no more accurate than your home machine and you have to be careful about using digital machines not only at home but at the doctor's office so if you're getting numbers that you can't necessarily believe you may need to have a old-fashioned stethoscope machine uh, to check your blood pressure so frequent blood pressures you have to do a correct technique otherwise you're going to get garbage numbers and garbage in is garbage out Bring your cuff with you when you go to the doctor. Bring your list of numbers when you go to the doctor. Do your blood pressure the way that you normally would at home. Let the doctor watch it. They can make any adjustments or corrections if you're doing something wrong. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.